welcome. On behalf of the Council of Conference Ministers, we welcome you this day to worship. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. In this season of Eastertide, in the midst of this global pandemic, we are grieving. We're we are anxious. We experience highs and lows as we try to stay home and stay safe. We do not grieve, however, as those without hope. We have hope that the resurrected Christ will accompany us today and always. We hope in the goodness of the human community to work for the common good. So welcome today to this time of worship. May it be a blessing to you and to all of us. Welcome. The timing of this worship video is in the month of May, 2020. And during the month of May in the United Church of Christ, we honor Mental Health Sunday. This year it's marked as May 17th. Regardless of the date, we honor and celebrate our siblings in Christ who struggle with mental illness. Individuals caught in the grip of mental illness are all around us. They are our friends, our co-workers, our family members, our parishioners. They are us. They, we, are beautiful in our gifts, our love, our talents, our wisdom, our play. And then they, we, are not so lovely. We are needy or angry, withdrawn or reliable, demanding, ungrateful, or unendingly sad. And they, we, are beloved children of God just the way we are. In the United Church of Christ, we embrace three core values, God's continuing testament, extending extravagant welcome, and changing lives. All three of these values are lived out well as we affirm that mental health and wellness are components of human health and wellness. And then we create practices, advocate for policies, and seek out leadership, not just inclusion, that ends stigma around mental illness and supports holistic approaches to health and wellness. Welcome to worship. May you be blessed in your whole being by the gifts and graces of God offered here. When we feel isolated and alone, O oh God, your word comes to us. When we face an uncertain future, the Bible reminds us. When we are scared and anxious, we hear your whisper. We come to this time of worship remembering the promises of our God, strengthened in hope and saturated in holy love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Happy Easter, everyone. Miss you. So today I want to talk to you about nightlights. Nightlights are really cool because you can have one on in your bedroom or your bathroom. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, it's not so scary. You can see what's in your room. You can see where you're going if you have to get out of bed and, and move through the house. If you left a book or a toy on the floor, you can see it before you stub your toe because that really hurts. I brought some of my favorite nightlights to show you. This one is um, reminds me of my favorite baseball team. So I always like to have this one on in the kitchen so that I can see where I'm going at night when, it, when the sun goes down. And then I have some other fun ones that are seasonal. I have my Boo nightlight for Halloween and I have my glitter nightlight for Christmas and, and into January in the cold months. And the, this is really cool because I, it not only shows light, but the gr glitter kind of dances and it always makes me smile. And then I have this nightlight that I keep in my bathroom all the time because whether it's daytime or nighttime, I can read the words, be your own magic. And that's always, really always makes me smile because it reminds me that I, can, that I can be my own magic. And that's a good thing to be reminded of. Night lights are important because they serve a purpose. They offer us light on our path, light to move around in the dark and not feel so alone or so lost. When we have a night light on, we can see enough to know the right place to step so that we don't hurt ourselves by tripping on something or bumping against something. Wouldn't it be nice to have a night light that chases away all of our worries in the bright light of day too? Maybe we're worried that some of our good friends may have forgotten us because we haven't been able to play with them outside for so many weeks. Or maybe we worry about how to get our schoolwork done while we're far away from our classroom or our teacher. Maybe we are tired of being stuck at home so much or fighting with our siblings. There are all kinds of worries or concerns we are dealing with at this time that can make us feel a little bit like we're groping in the dark. And wouldn't it be great to have a nightlight that helps us when we feel lost, whether that's at night or in the middle of the day? Well, there was a man named Paul, and he was an apostle. He, he believed in God, and he was very famous for writing and saying a lot of things to the church. And he reminds us in one of his writings in the Bible that we have the perfect nightlight. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus is a nightlight that promises never to be far away from us. Paul says that we grope for him and we find him, even though he is not far from us. Jesus is right there with us, day or night giving us light, whether we're lost, whether we're scared, whether we're confused, whether we can't see our way, whether that's at night or in the middle of the day. Like these wonderful night lights that we're talking about, Jesus gives us just enough light so that we can see our way through. Isn't that good? That's really good. I'd say that's pretty lit myself. So let's pray about that. And I'm going to invite you to repeat after me. I'm going to give you time to do that. But let's, let's pray together. God, when we are scared, in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day, thank you for being right there with us.
We thank you for that nightlight that is Jesus. May the nightlights that chase away our fears remind us of all the ways you are holding us close. Amen. Young folk and young at heart, may God bless you. La Declaración de Fe de la Iglesia Unida de Cristo. Creemos en Dios, el Espíritu Santo, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo y nuestro Creador. Y de sus obras testificamos. Dios llama los mundos para que existan. Creyó el ser humano a su imagen y su semejanza y puso ante la humanidad los caminos de la vida y de la muerte. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. Busca, en su santo amor, salvar a todas las personas de su desorientación y pecado. Dios juzga al ser humano y a las naciones por medio de su justa voluntad, declarada a través de los profetas y los Apóstoles. En Jesucristo, el hombre de Nazaret, nuestro Señor crucificado y resucitado, Dios ha venido y ha compartido nuestra suerte. Venció el pecado y la muerte y reconcilió al mundo para sí mismo. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. Dios nos concede el Espíritu Santo, que crea y renueva la Iglesia de Jesucristo y une en un pacto de fidelidad a personas de todas las edades, idiomas y razas. Dios nos llama como Iglesia para que aceptemos el costo y la alegría del discipulado, para que seamos sus servidores al servicio del ser humano para proclamar el evangelio a todo el mundo y resistir los poderes del maligno, para compartir el bautismo de Cristo, comer en su mesa y unirnos a Jesús en su pasión y victoria. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. Dios promete a toda persona que confía en Jesús el perdón de los pecados y la plenitud de su gracia, valor en la lucha por la justicia y la paz, su presencia en las tristezas y las alegrías y la vida eterna en su reino que no tiene fin, bendición, honor y gloria a Dios. Amen. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. 
blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy love, like the beautiful blossom of the lily, the joy of Easter seems to fade so quickly. Its brilliance buried by the withering words of a daily digest of news and noise that seems not to care that you have reordered the world. The wonder of a world made new seems crushed by the urgency which viruses and vitriol would voice as the daily ritual of remembrance. How easy, O Holy One, to re-enter the tombs of our own making and those rooms fashioned by our fear and our fatigue. So grant us the gift of noticing that lies just beyond the fading flower of every yesterday. Refashion our focus on your surging strength, your promised power, yearning to take center stage in our lives. Like the unopened bud that awaits the beckoning power of the sun, open our hearts to your Holy Spirit already around and within us that we may be readied, renewed, and blossomed into the beauty for which you have created us in Christ all along. Yes, Holy One, renew us and your whole creation, that we may be signs of your resurrection love in word and work throughout the world. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. Dios habla hoy del libro de los Hechos, capítulo 17, versículos 22 al 31. Pablo se levantó en medio de ellos en el Areápago y dijo, Atenienses, por todo lo que veo, ustedes son gente muy religiosa, pues al mirar los lugares donde Esteres celebran sus cultos. He encontrado un altar que tiene escritas estas palabras. A un Dios no conocido. Pues bien, lo que ustedes adoran sin conocer es lo que yo vengo a anunciarles. El Dios que hizo el mundo y todas las cosas que hay en él es Señor del cielo y de la tierra. No vive en templos hechos por los hombres, ni necesita que nadie haga nada por él, pues él es quien nos da a todos la vida, el aire y las demás cosas. De un solo hombre hizo el todas las naciones para que viven en toda la tierra. Y les ha señalado el tiempo y el lugar en que vi deben vivir. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. Para que busquen a Dios, y quizás, como a tientas puedan encontrarlo, aunque en verdad Dios no está lejos de cada uno de nosotros. Porque en Dios vivimos, nos move, movemos y existimos. 
como también algunos de los poetas de ustedes dijeron, somos descendientes de Dios. Siendo pues descendientes de Dios, no debemos pensar que Dios sea como las imágenes de oro, plata o piedra que los hombres hacen según su propia imaginación. Dios pasó por alto en otros tiempos la ignorancia de la gente, pero ahora ordena a todos en todas partes que se vuelvan a él. Porque Dios ha fijado un día en el cual juzgará al mundo con justicia por medio de un hombre que él ha escogido y que dio prueba a todos cuando lo resucitó. Que el Señor añada bendición a su palabra. And so they would search for God and perhaps grope for God and find God, though indeed God is not far from each and every one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are God's offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now God commands all people everywhere to repent. Because God has fixed a day on which God will have the whole world judged in righteousness by a man whom God has appointed. And of this, God has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. God has indeed reordered our world. The way we were before seems so long ago. And we find ourselves living in a new reality. We have discontinued practices that we thought were unchangeable. It turns out that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. I can remember a Sunday practice from my childhood. Many Sundays after church, my mom and dad would load us kids up in the front <coughs> and we would go for a Sunday ride. No destination in mind, daddy would just drive. Invariably, he would get lost somewhere on Long Island. In my younger years, I would cry because I was afraid that we were lost. But my dad would say, you are not lost. As long as you are with mommy and me, you can't get lost. As I grew, I came to understand that and find comfort that no matter where I was, if I were with my parents, I could never get lost. In these long weeks, when we've been cloistered in our houses, many of us have been feeling lost. We went into this time of stay safe, stay home, fearing deep in our hearts that being physically separated from our faith communities would cause us to be separated from God. Fearing that if we were not in our favorite pews, that we would not be able to find God. We thought we needed our church buildings, our beautiful sanctuaries to feel God's warmth enveloping us in love, but it turns out that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. Friends, it's not only the separation from our buildings that has us feeling off kilter. We've all been living through a nightmare, an international nightmare. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us live in fear of losing loved ones. Some of us are suffering from the virus, and some of us are suffering from lost income because of the virus. Some of us are bored from too many days looking at the same walls, and some of us are forced to work at home, while some of us wished we could stay home and not work, endangering ourselves and our loved ones to keep essential businesses open for the rest of us. Some of us, the heroes among us, are working in hospitals and nursing homes, working as EMTs and police officers and firefighters and orderlies, many of whom are 
overwhelmed and overworked, trying hard to keep people alive. Some of us don't know if we can continue to watch as more and more people get sick and die. This is indeed a long national nightmare. Those people whom Paul encountered in Athens, they had some inkling that there was a God whom they did not know. Paul had observed as he walked around their city that they had objects of worship in their shrines and that among them was an altar to an unknown God. He understood that these were people hungering for an experience of the holy. And so he told them about the one true God, and he let them in on the secret that the one true God could not be confined to their temples. No, he shared with them that the one true God was not far from each of them, not far from each one of us. He let them know that in God we live and move and have our being. As Paul told them about Jesus, how he'd lived and how he died, but most importantly, he shared, he told them about how he had been resurrected. He shared with them the saving balm of the good news, that we are a resurrection people. He told them, and he is telling us still, that death does not have the final word. We are living in a time when we need to remember every day that we are a resurrection people. These are indeed hard times that we're going through. There are times when it seems as if we have been abandoned by God. But Paul is right here speaking to us from 2,000 years ago. The Apostle Paul is reminding us that no matter how bleak the time, God is still Emmanuel, God with us. He's reminding us that we are God's people and no amount of sheltering in place can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No tiny microbe can take away from us that truth that we are a resurrection people. You know, when I grew up and had children of my own, we would sometimes take those Sunday rides after church. And we would purposefully turn down streets that we'd never been on. We would jump off of the interstate uh, at an exit that we'd never taken before. This was before GPS, and we would always get lost. We grown-ups had to look to the sun for direction and keep turning until we found a familiar street or a business that let us know what town we were in. But in the back seat, our children just looked out the windows, not worried about a thing because they knew that no, they could never get lost while they were with us, their parents. Friends, we are in a difficult time right now. We feel lost and afraid, afraid that nothing will ever be the same. Nothing will ever be like it was before. We've also learned so many things in this time. The most important thing we've learned is that the God who made the world and everything in it does not live in shrines made by human hands. We've learned that no matter what, in God we live and move and have our being. Things may change. God doesn't. We can never get lost. We have Jesus as our guide, and God is the foundation of our lives. We have the Holy Spirit filling us with such love that it just has to spill over onto others. Things change. God doesn't. Things change. God doesn't. Things change. God doesn't. Amen. Amen. An invitation to generosity. Like God's love, our generosity cannot be contained by the coronavirus. Instead, our generosity is abundant during this pandemic because of who and whose we are. 
As the United Church of Christ, we have always advocated with the most vulnerable to ensure they are supported, nourished, and empowered to live into God's creation. When you give during this pandemic, your church, conference, and broader UCC are able to advocate for the health and equity of the most vulnerable affected by COVID-19. We invite you to give generously by writing a check, using auto bill pay, or online giving. We invite you to give to your church, to our church's wider mission, and to give to a person or a business serving others during this pandemic. When you give, post why you give to your church and the United Church of Christ during this pandemic at hashtag why I give UCC so that we can share and celebrate with each other. Prayer of Dedication Creator God, in you we live and move and have our being. So take our monetary gifts and bless each church to serve the most vulnerable during the coronavirus pandemic that we may truly become a just world for all. Amen. In the fall of 2015, I began walking the Red Road, recovery from addiction. Creator God placed in my heart to start a talking circle. Three months of rejection in Billings community led me to Billings First Church, where I was welcomed with open arms and asked when I wanted to start. I was speechless. God had opened a door when I had many doors slammed in my face. March 10th, 2016, we had our first White Eagle talking circle. Today, there is a talking circle every day for those walking the Red Road. I hope. We will hate, our hate, our hate, our hate, our hate, Friends, wherever you are right now, whenever you are drawing yourself closer to the divine through use of this worship video, whatever the challenges and joys of life's journey may be for you in this moment, may the peace of Christ be known to you in transformative ways. We come now to the thanksgiving and remembrance of Holy Communion. As we do, we pause for a moment to allow you and those who are with you to gather the elements you would like to use for communion. What those specific elements are need not be of great concern. They are but symbols of how God feeds us. Among our United Church of Christ global partners, we experience a variety of elements used in celebrating communion. No matter how non-traditional or culturally different an item may be, all that is served from Christ's table provided a taste of the sacred. 
So take a moment to gather what you will need to eat and drink as we prepare ourselves for this holy meal. Where two or three are gathered, there am I. We hold these words from scripture as a truth of our experience of this holy meal. We know the real presence of Christ is among us as we share with our siblings in faith the gifts of love that are found at this table. Now it is true that those who originally heard Jesus say these words probably couldn't have imagined the type of technology we use to gather ourselves into one another's presence today. But our God is not limited by our understandings or imaginings. On World Communion Sunday, we gather with those across the globe who share the Christian faith. We are not physically present with one another, but we believe we are gathered at the same table with Christ present among us, regardless of our physical distance from each other. At other times, we recall how gathered at this table among us are the saints of the ages, those who have nurtured us, those who have inspired us, those who helped birth faith in our hearts, eat with us at this table of grace. Even those who now rest in God's eternal care, for not even temporal continuity defines the gathering at Christ's table. Gathered here at this table today are not two or three, but an uncountable number of the faithful. We are here to feed each other and to be fed by each other, not with the gifts of our own hands, but with gifts of divine grace that we are called to share. Gathered with us is the risen Christ, who is the host and author of this meal. Christ is present. Christ is among us. Let us celebrate. May we pray together. O oh, Holy One, you have been among us from the dawning of your beloved creation to the journey with your covenant people, through the witness of peasants and prophets, and in midwifing your church into existence. Through the incarnation, divine love became embodied in the person of Jesus. You experienced firsthand both the deep aches of our hearts and the shallow nature of our faithfulness. And you remained among us anyway. In the resurrection, you proved to us once for all that nothing, not even death itself, can separate us from your love. On the Pentecost day, you bestowed your spirit to be our eternal companion. You have been faithful. You have been present to us. We come to this table this day as those who are feeling more of a sense of distance than presence. The realities of our pandemic ravaged world are harsh right now. Through tear filled eyes and with broken hearts, we grieve the many deaths and losses we have known. Fear and uncertainty grip our communities even as we celebrate those places where courage breaks through. And in this time when we need each other the most, our care for each other means keeping some physical distance from each other. Feed us with your spiritual truths this day. Remind us that it has always been true that we can be present to one another, even while at a distance. Ground us in the assurance of your presence in our times of grief and challenge, as well as during our celebrations of your grace. Raise us again to be your Easter people. For it is during uncertain times when resurrection's promise is always fulfilled. We pray this in the name of ever-present love. Amen. We recall this day that on the night of his betrayal, Jesus sat with table with his disciples and his friends, and he took the bread. And he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
in the same manner. As the meal concluded, he took the chalice filled with the fruits of the vine, and after a blessing, he gave the cup to those gathered, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us, wherever we may be, receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. Let us, wherever we may be, receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. This is the bread of life. This is the cup of blessing. Let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Merciful and loving God, we thank you for this privilege to come to your table. Your table where the sacrifices are known and where the love is present. We ask that you take these earthly elements and transform them into divine elements. That we may experience the fullness of your love through Christ Jesus. We needed this. We needed this moment to be with one another and to be with you. We needed to experience once again that there is always room for us at your table. We needed to taste again the sweetness of your love. Thank you. Thank you for knowing what we need and for providing far more in abundance than we could ever hope for. For it is in your holy name we pray. Amen.
Friends, as we have gathered in diverse places and spaces today for worship, we offer you this closing prayer. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Siblings in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we are one body united across time and space, walking in the calling, in the anointing, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are one body sharing our hopes and dreams for the kingdom of God, being salt and light in these days. And as one body, we leave this virtual space united in love, united in hope, and united in our commitment to serve God, to serve our communities, to serve the world, and to love each other. Go therefore, having received the blessing of the living God, who in love created you, the blessing of the risen Christ, who in love redeems you, and the blessing of their Holy Spirit, who continues to abide with and brood within the body of Christ and is the lifeblood of the church that we love. Because you are blessed, become a blessing as you proclaim the love of God in word and deed to all the ends of the earth. 